Hello. The largest pitch competition in the Pacific Northwest, uh, largest angel pitch competition in the Pacific Northwest, maybe the largest pitch competition in the Pacific Northwest as well, but going into its 21st year, Bend Venture Conference, which annually happens in October. So you may say, why am I talking about that now? Well, see, Bend Venture Conference is only as exciting as the company standing on stage pitching their concepts to investors. And this is where you come in. If you're working on a startup and you would like to be on that stage pitching to investors from not only from throughout the Pacific Northwest, but people come from throughout the United States to attend that event. And if you'd like to be on stage, now's the time to get your application in. There are a variety of stages that pitch at Ben Venture, so it doesn't matter what stage your startup is at, if you're kind of an early stage or growth stage startup and you are pursuing equity-based venture capital investment, I highly encourage you to submit an application to Ben Venture Conference. That's cool, right? That you learned about that? Hit subscribe and you'll learn stuff like that every single week. You know, I'm thinking of going to BVC again this year. It's been a few years since I've been down. I mean, I've been down in Bend recently, but uh, haven't been to BVC for quite a while. And it's a great event. Like even, even if it doesn't work in your favor, attending Ben Venture Conference is a great way to connect with the broader community of startup support in the Pacific Northwest. So you're working on a startup, you need funding, you think you got a good pitch, or you think you could have a good pitch by October, highly encourage you to apply for Ben Venture Conference. I'll link it up below so that you can submit your application or at least start working on your application. I don't believe they're due until early August, but you know, maybe how about we don't procrastinate on this application? How about we work on it now and maybe submit it soon? Huh? Cool. Great. <laughs> okay. Uh, back to Portland. Love Central Oregon. Let's, let's move back to Portland. Portland tends to have very kind of like highlighted establishments that people always talk about when they talk about Portland. You know, there's, there's, there's Powell's, which obviously largest independent bookstore in the world takes up a significant amount of space and has tons and tons of volumes of books. There's obviously the, you know, the infamous pink box from Voodoo Donut that people, tourists or otherwise, are attracted to that institution and establishment and, and tend to go there. And then there are a handful of others that people kind of put as their must see, must shop, must eat at kind of places. I would say food carts kind of in general are along that line. But there's some folks who are concerned that that doesn't represent really Portland at its finest. They're continuing to go to the same things or highlighting the same things. Not that they aren't great, just that they're not fully representative of our city and all of the creative entrepreneurs who are in our city. And that's why there is now a site called The Actual Portland. The Actual Portland is designed to highlight everything from food and beverage to retail locations to other opportunities to engage with a wide variety of entrepreneurs and retail establishments that really make our city what it is. Best of all, it helps highlight underrepresented entrepreneurs here in town. So folks who might not get the attention they deserve, even though they have a really compelling product. You know me, I'm always happy to see affinity maps or collections of things that makes it easier for not only tourists to find things in Portland, but to help Portlanders find amazing things in Portland, because that's why we live here. That's what we appreciate about our city. That's why we're here. We like to spend local. We like to support our local folks. And things like the actual Portland provide you with 
plenty of new places to check out. You know, your new favorite place may be listed on the actual Portland and you don't even know it yet. You won't know it until you try it. So go to the actual Portland, look up all the places that they're suggesting, or maybe if you're like, I don't know, I don't have time. Follow them on Instagram. They're always providing great lists of things that you could go frequent here in Portland. And they're timely. They're like, you know, it's warm. They, I remember them doing ice cream places the other day. So do yourself a favor. Don't just look at kind of the standard, well-known Portland. Take the opportunity to explore the actual Portland. You won't be sorry. When it comes to equity and inclusion within the workplace, salary can be one of those very divisive things, which is why I'm always happy to see the intersectional group do their annual pay transparency report, which is really just trying to determine the, the adoption of pay and salary transparency within the Portland area. Now, some states, some cities have passed laws that say if you're going to post a job, you have to be transparent about the pay for that job. But here, still not a requirement, although more and more people are doing it. This report always helps you have a better understanding of not only who's doing it and why it's happening, but also why it's important to people, employees, and and employers here in Portland. So if you're curious about our progress on pay transparency in the Portland area, I highly encourage you to read the Intersectional Group's report. I'll link up to it so you can download it and get the latest on the annual report on pay transparency. Lots of energy getting focused on climate tech and climate entrepreneurs. We recently had the WINGS conference, which was a huge gathering of climate-focused people, especially around climate startups and that kind of thing. This week, Enduring Planet, a local fund that focuses on climate startups, got a write-up in GeekWire. That's right. Our friends to the north decided to spend a little time chatting with Enduring Planet and highlighted the work that they're doing. So what does Enduring Planet do? Enduring Planet's basically like gap funding for really promising climate tech, climate focused startups. So let's say you've got this great idea, you're running this great company, you go to the federal government, they have a grant opportunity, tell your story, they're like, that's great. You get this grant, you get all this money, and you're like, fantastic, I'm going to put that money to work tomorrow. Problem is, the government's not going to get you that money for months, if not years, because they move at the speed of the federal government. So what are you supposed to do? How are you supposed to get the work done if you don't have the money from the feds to get the work done? That's where Enduring Planet comes in. They fill that gap. They say, you've won this grant opportunity. We know that money is coming, but it's going to take a while. Here's money in the meantime to help you do the work you need to do so you're not impeded by how slowly bureaucracy works. So great idea, great program. I'm really happy to see them highlighted in GeekWire. You know, the climate startup environment is improving day after day here in Portland. Enduring Planet, we've got Climate Curious, we've got Portland Seed Fund and others who are investing in that space. So it's going to come together here in Portland and it's becoming an amazing community. If you have any curiosity about climate and the future of our planet, as well you should, I highly suggest keeping an eye on Enduring Planet and watching the work they're doing in the climate startup space. Today is the last Friday of June. Hard to believe, but it is. Which means next Friday is the first Friday of July. And what would usually happen on a first Friday is our friends at Upstart would say, hey, it's first Friday. Why don't you come hang out at our place? Come hang out with us, meet some people at the, at the Upstart Collective. Meet other people from the community, come hang out with us, enjoy the sun, enjoy the balcony at at Upstart Collective East Side, whatever, like just come on and hang out. However, (laughs) this first Friday 
happens to be the day after Independence Day. And so the, the first Friday function will not be happening at Upstart Collective this week. So I just wanted to remind you that because of the holiday, no first Friday, I mean, there is a first Friday, obviously, but there's no first Friday function, no first Friday gathering happening next week. So hope you enjoy the holiday. Hope you get to take some downtime, but please don't show up at Upstart Collective because no one will be there to let you in. I mean, they might be there, but they're not having a function. They're not having a gathering. So we'll have to wait until August, first Friday, August. So enjoy your own little private first Friday celebration. And I hope it's a really good one. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, <laughs> events are starting to quiet down like they do in July and August. So if you're like, what am I missing? What's going on? Like, you're not really missing much. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's summer in Portland, but news is still happening. So I will be keeping an eye on the news just like I do for you every single week. I really enjoy getting the opportunity to share all the news that's happening here and keeping you up to date on what's going on in the Portland startup community. Again, if you choose to celebrate Independence Day, I hope you get some downtime. Uh, get to work on your Bend Venture conference application. That's super important. Check out the actual Portland. Maybe try somewhere new over the, over the long weekend, if you can, or any other time for that matter. Hang in there. And until we get the chance to chat again, please keep up the good work. What's that? You're curious about more startups in the Portland area? Well, you're in luck. We have stories about Portland startups right here. <laughs>